I think most people have not paid attention, they think beauty means it must be sunrise, sunset at the most. <laughs> the very way a person walks is beautiful that geometrically things have fallen into place. The cosmos itself is perfection of geometry. If I look at a man or a woman, first thing is I see their geometry from head to toe. I thought I'd just start with a very basic question, a simple question. It's a question that I'm often asked at poetry readings, at poetry workshops, poetry being primarily what I practice. And the question is, what is a good poem? And the answer really is, if the poem is a form of verbal design or verbal choreography, what is design? And is beauty implicit in that notion? If so, what is beauty? Whether it's a machine or an ant or a grasshopper or a human being or clothes, whatever, or a building, if it fits and flows with least amount of friction, if one who has the eyes to observe, it always seems very beautiful. I don't know how many people notice this. Right from my childhood, I spent a lot of time paying attention to every kind of insect. <laughs> and I found insects are the most fabulously designed creatures on the planet. And every kind, if you look at them, in terms of color, in terms of geometry, in terms of variety of activity that they can do, they're so fabulously designed. So, uh, when I say you're beautiful, don't think I'm saying you're an insect. <laughs> That's not what I meant <laughs> I'm saying uh, different creatures, we have two legs, somebody else has four legs, somebody else has six, eight, twelve, whatever number. But the beauty of nature and evolution is the design has been perfected. I think most people have not paid attention, they think beauty means it must be sunrise, sunset at the most. Small things are very beautifully made because with least amount of friction, they've learned to function. If you look at… Uh, I mean, if you look at the activity, if you measure the activity, let's say of an insect, how much activity an insect is performing, for how many calories that he consumes. Obviously, he's geometrically perfect, least amount of friction. So, uh, anything that's well made always excited me, whether it's a machine or a building or an insect or an animal or a human being. If you're talking about humans being beautiful, if you look at somebody, when they're joyful, everybody is beautiful. Whatever the shape of the nose or the chin, when you see them in a joyful condition, they're always beautiful. With the best, whatever is considered the best shape of the nose or the chin, when they're in bad states, they don't look beautiful anymore. So, if you are in an exuberant state of life, you will look beautiful in the face, I mean. To keep the body beautiful takes little work. A lot of people are trying to take the shape of the planet. <laughs> no, I'm not saying in an insulting way, I'm saying… Uh, I mean, when you look at the world, particularly when I travel outside the country, India, also in India, not so in rural India, you go to urban India, when… when I was growing up in school, there were only two fat kids, only two. And we always thought, you know, they were like stood out because all of us were scorny, because there was so much activity and so many things to do. But today you see children getting off a school bus, almost forty, fifty percent are like this. Maybe it's part of the evolution that they're trying to become like the planet. 
So, isn't a round person beautiful? See, that way if you look at it, it's the way you look at it. You can look at anything as beautiful. If you are in a certain state, everything looks beautiful, that's different. But I think we're talking about physical, mechanical beauty. That mainly means geometrically there is some perfection where things operate with least amount of friction. Suddenly the very way a person walks is beautiful because there is not lumbering around. That goes for a human being or an animal or a machine or everything, that geometrically things have fallen into place. In fact, the entire universe is just happening because of geometric perfection. Well, the dome is standing because of geometric perfection, not because of the strength of the material. All the buildings we designed here, we always saw how it can be geometrically perfect so that the material that we use is very little because our problem is always budget. <laughs> People say it's such a large building with these kind of beams, it'll collapse. It will not because geometrically it's been thought through. So, evolutionary process has always looked at geometry. The cosmos itself is perfection of geometry. Why is the planet sticking to its pathway? Is because it's achieved some kind of geometric perfection. If it goes slightly off, it cannot come back again. This is not just true with this planet, it's true with the entire universe. So, in… in my mind, it's always been like this. If I look at a tree, if I look at a cloud, if I look at a man or a woman or anything, for me, it's always the geometry of things. First thing is, I see their geometry from head to toe, afterwards all the other things. <laughs> because geometrically it should be right, only then it will stay. Otherwise, its very life is reduced. The life of a building, or an animal or a creature or anything, any form in the existence, if it doesn't find some kind of geometric harmony, then it will go before its time. The entire yogic system is just that, to align your body to the cosmic geometry, so that if you sit, if you sit here for two days, it's still no issue because you have understood the geometry of the body.